whether you're 18, 80, or anything in between, if you have a good idea and make smart decisions, you can make millions and you can do it fast. The proof is all around us in the young and the rich. Tonight, we'll show you what they're doing and doing fast to make those millions so you can do it too. Take Ryan Blair. He's founded six successful companies and he's only 30 years old. He's gonna show you to stop overthinking and start making millions fast. I couldn't shoot a jump shot, I couldn't sing, I couldn't act, I couldn't dance. So about the only way that I was going to become rich was if I started my own company. I'm Ryan Blair and I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've started six multi-million dollar companies by the time I was 30 years old. 24-7 tech, multi-million dollar business, Sky Pipeline, $25 million business, PathConnect.com, soon to be a billion dollar business, Visalis Sciences, $100 million company, I can't believe I am where I am. When I made my first million, I was in awe. It was like my entire life had changed forever. Where I'd come from, I had nothing to lose. So most entrepreneurs, they fail because they have something to lose. For me, there was no way I was heading back to where I came from. Life could only get better and life can only get bigger. Well, life's been great for you, sir. Tonight, we're teaching people, it doesn't always take 100 years to make the money. I mean, you at 19 had your first company, six companies, well, multi-million dollar companies by the time you're 30. How'd you figure it out? Where did this drive come from? Well, you know, first, there's a misconception here. It's been 10 years of, you know, 17 hours a day, seven days a week. No shortcuts. So Career-wise, you know, I've, I've probably done more work than most people that are 50, 60 years old. So there is no shortcut. Now, I'm, I'm lucky that I had the right mentorship, people to teach me things that, you know, that you can't just find in business school. But growing up, you had anything but mentorship. No. Take me to life as a kid. I, your story is, is a rough one. Yeah, you know, uh, I was raised by a single mother. Um, tragedy struck my family when my father got addicted to drugs. He was, he was a middle-class, successful person. So I started out with a decent lifestyle, and then we lost everything. Uh, went to, uh, you know, in and out of the streets, in and out of foster care facilities. My mother struggled on minimum wage to raise me. And so I kind of had a bone to pick with society. I was really angry with everything that had happened to me and my mom, to losing everything, homes being foreclosed on. You know, I lost everything and then found myself in a position where I had nothing to lose. What does it feel like as a 9-year-old, 11-year-old kid, they're foreclosing your home, you see your mom working minimum wage, you're being put in for what, get any particular moment you remember where you go, this is the, I, I am yeah, never gonna yeah. feel this again. There's one, my mom and I had fled from my dad because he was, he was in bad shape and we were court ordered to flee, otherwise I'd be taken to foster care forever. And we moved all of our stuff into this new home and I was so excited, it was a one bedroom home in a bad neighborhood. And we, uh, we offloaded all of our goods and then we went back for a second trip to get the rest of our stuff. And the people in the neighborhood saw us moving in and they robbed us of everything. And when I walked into the home and saw that my prized possessions, everything that I had as a kid that I loved and adored, was taken from me, clothing, everything. I mean, I had nothing. And I, uh, we called the police and the police showed up and they said, Ryan, you don't want to report this crime because those people in the park will know you reported it and they'll come back for vengeance. That was when I knew I was in a whole new world. How old were you at this point? I was about 13. It was about 13. I, when I saw the look in the police officer's face and he said, I really feel bad for this kid, that was when I, you know, when I understood that it was different, that what I had was a lot worse than what a lot of other people had. And how about your dad uh, on drugs? Uh, any moment you remember where you, you see your dad just falling apart? Yeah, I remember a moment when he accused me of tapping the phones uh, for the government. So he'd become paranoid schizophrenic uh, because he had such an obsessive you know, uh, situation with drugs that he accused me of tapping the phones, uh, working with the government, and being some form of an agent or something like that. And that's when I knew I had to leave, I had to flee. So how does a kid who's 13 heading to foster homes, nothing a penny in the world, mom on minimum wage, how does a guy like that give us the secrets to, by 19, starting his own business, by 30, having six multi-million dollar businesses? How, how the hell did you do it? Man? You know, for, for one, I had to grow up very fast, right? So at 13 years old, I, I kind of had to be an adult. I had to fend for myself, and I had to take care of me first. So I became, uh, you know, a person who took care of myself first and foremost from a survival standpoint. So I kind of built these instincts, not realizing it. They were very suitable to entrepreneurship. Because, Which ones? What are those? Well, you know, really uh, not being afraid, right? So in contrast to where I'd come from, where I was going was only going to get better. So I was never going to go back to the bad neighborhood. I was never going to go back to a one-bedroom shack in the middle of a, you know, gang-ridden territory. I'd never go back there. So starting a business was real easy. It was risky, though. I left a job, a career, where I was making close to $100,000 a year. I was 19 years old, and I said, I'm going to risk everything. But how will you uh, take me to that math? Once again, 
You're, you're a kid in the ghetto. You're a kid with nothing. You're foster homes. How do you make 100 grand a year yeah, at so 19 years so old? It's an interesting story. I was in youth camp, and I found the, uh, in preparation for coming on the show here, I found a letter that I wrote to my mom in camp saying, I'm going to do better. I'm going to get my life. You know, I'm going to make you proud one day. And today, I started playing with computers, and I really think I want to do something in the industry or in the field of computers. It wasn't that quite articulate, but I have that letter, that moment. I didn't realize it at the time. Healthy. I didn't even realize it. I was about 14 years old. I was in camp for over a month, and I remember I really was fascinated by computers and at the time if you recall in the dot-com 1.0 era anyone who had skills with regard to computers were there were talent that was a high in demand yeah, and them. we were making absurd amounts of money so I would get you know I'd, I'd sign on to a company get a fifteen thousand dollar signing bonus and three months later I'd get a thirty percent raise and sign on to another and what happened at 19 so at 19 years old I, I just I got struck with the idea to be an entrepreneur uh, I was afraid, though. I, I, you know, I'd had a lot of things uh, going, you know, right for me, making good income. Uh, you know, I'd bought a car, so I'd taken some risk, got some debt, and I decided I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And I went to my my mentor, my stepdad, and I said, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about being an entrepreneur. And he said, do it. You have nothing to lose. You know, so what? You know, if you if you fail and if you lose everything, who cares? You're still going to be the same person. What people don't understand in our society is, you, even if you're down to the the lowest financial lows, you're going to wake up alive the next day. You're not going to have everything, you know, your, your life, your body, your health cannot be taken from you if you've taken, you know, if you've taken control and, and, and taken care of it. And what's, what's, once again, you, and your stepdad was right, so what? Yeah. But you, now, so now, what? You lose. You still got, you, and then you put one foot in front of the other yeah. the next day. But now also. everybody else in the world lined up to tell me don't do it, right? Do, because everybody, you know, the old they said, right? They said that it, uh, entrepreneurship doesn't work, or they said the industry you're getting into is, is difficult. So don't listen to these people that are telling you advice unless they're qualified to give it. People who have done it, who have lived it, and then listen keenly. What's your formula? What's the Ryan formula for you want the big box? Obviously, you're going to have to work your hard, kill yeah. yourself. But here are the, here are the speed, speed tips. Self-assessment. So know where you're weak, surround yourself with people that are going to strengthen your weaknesses. I mean, I've got the best staff in the world. So my companies are so successful it's because of the management team that we've assembled and the weaknesses we've been able to fill the gaps on so that I could really power on my strengths and work on my strengths. So surround yourself with the right people. And as an entrepreneur, now that we have some capital, I can you know, afford to hire these great minds. Prior to that, what I did is I gave them equity in my businesses and I got them to sit on my board. People like yourself, I'd ask, join me on my board, teach me how to become a successful entrepreneur, tell me what I need to know. Be a uh, student every day. Brian Blair, guy who's making yep. it big Thank and you. making it fast, yeah. and a hell of a dresser. Thanks. Serial entrepreneur and founder of six companies by the time he's 30, each one making millions. More big ideas. Beating the odds to achieve their dreams, deserving local high school kids get some practical tips on getting ahead. It is all part of Fox Studios' journey to excellence. 17-year-old twins Arvion and Darvion Jones have faced plenty of adversity. They've moved around a lot and they've... Actually um, been a part of the foster program for um, the majority of their life. But they always knew they could create something better if they could get to college. That's what I would like to do. That's my goal, to go to college. I want to travel, first of all, and then I want to be rich, so... Today at 20th Century Fox Studio, they got further reinforcement. No goal is beyond their reach. Any of you guys ever uh, dream about becoming rich? Through a mentorship program called Journey to Excellence, 50 high-achieving students from low-performing schools and circumstances got a lesson in beating the odds. That's the room me and my mother shared. 29-year-old multimillionaire Ryan Blair says he had help escaping the poverty he grew up in. The one thing that I find in common of all successful people is a mentor of some sort. For Arvion and Darvion, that mentor is Fox Diversity Coordinator Damar Smith. From him, Arvion has learned what grades I need to get and how to study better and what colleges to start applying for. The mentoring moment that has meant the most to Darvion, when Smith showed up at a recent dance recital. I love him for that, like seriously, because my own dad didn't even come, so he came and I was like, wow. For Smith, showing up was a no-brainer. You have to encourage them in any aspect of what they're doing. And that, in a sense, will lead kids to believe that, you know what, I can accomplish the impossible. Good job. <laughs> Ryan Blair says despite his success, he continues to seek out mentors, people who are good at whatever it is he wants to do next. Uh, three years ago, we didn't make the top 100 list, and we were indeed a company that was about to go out of business. Um, I share that with you because some of you are making critical decisions right now, and some of you uh, are going to experience a reality walking out of this event. You make a decision to change the way you operate your business, and to build your business and hopefully 
get an award like this. So we're one, we're very humbled and grateful to be here. It's been a lot of hard work. We couldn't have done it without our teams that are here in the room with us, without the Gergen family, without the promoters in our field. It took a whole lot of us to get to where we are. And I can tell you, we're just getting started. So thank you.